Something I've always thought is really interesting, especially when I started to make my own music, is hearing about how other artists I like and look up to make the songs, what their process is like. And today I posted on my Instagram and asked what people think I should talk about, and a lot of people asked me to talk about my process, and I'm flattered that people want to hear about it because, especially being a content creator, at least in my head all the time, I'm just like illegitimizing myself, especially you know, when people write off like, oh, that's just a YouTuber music person, that's a TikTok artist. So today I wanted to come on here and talk my shit about my own process. It's changed so much over time and I've learned so much about making music. Literally, as I was typing this today, like 20 minutes ago on my computer, I had this like epiphany that I didn't have before I decided I want to make this video today. And I just like, I'm so excited to talk about it. I first started trying to make music really in freshman year summer after college. And what inspired me to start making music was the fact that I was going to film school at the time. I thought I was going to be an actress. I never thought that music would be a legitimate choice for me for a career. But when I was going to film school studying like writing for TV, I realized that so many of my peers were doing music as a hobby. I don't need to have all this experience like doing piano lessons growing up or singing lessons to it's to be good at music. It's not too late for me to just like do it. I started on GarageBand, the classic GarageBand to pirated Logic Pipeline. That was me. Actually, I started on FL Studio because I had a gaming laptop, Razor Blade Stealth, worst purchase of my life. It exploded after two years, but it came with FL Studio for free. Uh, yes, it did. But basically, I did everything myself. And my philosophy when I first started was every song I'm making, I should just put out. It doesn't matter how good or bad it is. I should just shit it out because it's wasted time if I don't release this song. Every song has got to go out because at least someone will like it, right? Why did I make it if I didn't want to put it out? And in the beginning, this process and sort of outlook on making music was pretty liberating because I thought it was normal to sort of hate all the music you make. I thought that was just a normal feeling and that's just like an artist being really hard on themselves. But in reality, I just wasn't spending enough time on these songs for me to actually like them. I literally would just rush through a song just for the sake of like, okay, song's done, next song. And in the beginning, like the early days, I made music under this name called Miss iPad. Sometimes I would have a friend from Berkeley School of Music mix those songs. I went to Emerson, so I was in Boston. Berkeley was right there. Other than that though, a lot of the time I would literally do everything myself. It was nice because I had that total control, but I feel like at the time it sort of inhibited my growth. It was hard to sort of get really good at one aspect of music when I'm trying to get really good at all of these aspects that take time to perfect. Fast forward to junior year of college, second semester, COVID happens and I need a hobby. I figure why not try to perfect my craft? Why not get better at music? Why don't I start teaching myself music theory? And I think music theory is such a taboo thing for artists, especially artists who don't have experience making music, like with lessons as a kid or whatever, like people who just sort of started doing it as a hobby and are naturally just really good at it. I think there's this stigma of, I don't need music theory to be good at music. I can be good at music without theory. And it's, yeah, it's entirely possible to be good at music without theory. Personally, I feel like I became such a better musician when I started to teach myself theory. I, it's not like I go into the studio now and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I look at the circle of fifths, which key will do good with this key if I do a modal interchange. It's like, I'm not consciously always thinking about that, but I think that there are core lessons within music theory that can sort of help make things easier when you're in a creative standstill. And during COVID, although I had a lot more free time, there was only so much I could do because I had to balance virtual school along with teaching myself music theory and running this music theory education account. Someone I knew at college was always making beats and we knew each other, but it never came up when we were at school that we should make music together. But during COVID, I heard a song that he had put out on Spotify, just a beat, just a plain beat. And he named it Online Class. And I was like, oh, can I actually like sing over this? Like, would that be cool? And he was like, yeah, I'll send you the MP3. I pull out my freaking iPad, literally this iPad. I pull out GarageBand. I drag the song into it and I'm just like freestyling these melodies over this beat and then I spit out this song and 
I thought it was pretty good. I was pretty proud of it. So then he kept sending me more beats and I would just sing over these beats like, okay, that's pretty easy. And at the same time, I was looking at this process, especially when I made that first song online class and I went, wow, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Why haven't I started collaborating with other artists on the production and I just focus on writing the lyrics and the vocal melodies? Because that'll allow me to get really good at this one thing and let someone who's already good at this other thing focus on being good on that other thing. We come together and we make something better. I was doing it wrong this whole time by doing it myself. I've been getting it all wrong. Then after I put out this four song EP, I was like, you know what? What's the point of doing these projects when at the end of the day, I walk away from them only really proud of one of the songs. I should just start doing singles, say screw the whole project thing. It's so much harder to market them anyway, especially because at that point I'm doing everything myself. I still don't have management or anything. I'm literally doing it all myself aside from the beats and the mixing and mastering. So then I started working with this other producer, same process, he just sends me beats he made I put stuff on top and then I send them back but this time we have a bit more of a back and forth of shaping the beat to fit around the vocals and feel like it's built around the vocals even though the song was born out of the vocals being built around the production that's how guessing games was made this part of the song wasn't in there, I told Marius, the producer, what if we added something like insane there before we go into that chorus again? And then that drop, like what if we just added something ridiculous? And he went insane. I was like, okay, yeah, that's pretty insane. And even for the vocals, like Marius and I had a bit more of a back and forth with the, this process, like this part of the song, the main chorus of the song, this part. first I had made it sound like instead of being like feet e, 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 it was like fi, eh, 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 it was like double as fast and I was like what if it did what if it sounded like this and then when Mario sent me the song back he was like actually what if it were a bit slower and I was like okay I actually really like that so again I have this feeling of man I've been doing it all wrong this whole time like I have it figured out now I have my process figured out I know how to make music now so then I start making these trips to LA I start making music in person and I realize oh no this whole time I've been doing it all wrong this whole time I don't figured out I've been doing it all wrong again making music in person I get why people do it like this it feels so much more like you're making the song together the song feels more authentic I feel more proud of it at the end of the day because I feel like I have input on the song's birth and before my song CEO of my ass came out I was never making music with people in person it just I didn't think it was right for me I didn't think I could do it but then when I made CEO of my ass in person with Jondra and I was like, oh my God, I've been doing it wrong again. F Why haven't I been making songs in person? It's so much better. It's so much more fun. It's like you have so much more of a creative flow and it's way more of an actual collaboration. And I think that something that I'd felt when I first started collaborating in the first place is that collaboration makes such a better product because you're working with other people who have different perspectives and different experience and they may think of ideas that are so good that you would have never thought of because they have their own brain. You can come together and two really good people can make something amazing. But now I'm in this part of my career where I feel like I'm doing it all wrong again. And I feel like I'm like, why haven't I just been doing it myself this whole time? I should just start making music myself, stop working with producers because Although like making these songs has been such an incredible experience and the creative process of it is such a beautiful thing, the business side is so annoying. There's something about bringing business into it that it's never the same. It's never the same as it once was. There's more pressure. There's more people involved. There's lawyers involved that take forever to figure something out. So then the song has to be delayed because you have to wait on lawyers and like stems to be sent. But if I were to just make music myself and all I do is like pay a mixing engineer to mix it, but I just start producing and singing myself, then I'll have way less stress when the time comes to release a song about worrying about like, oh my God, when's this producer agreement gonna get finalized? And another hard lesson that I've learned, not only just in the music industry, not only just in the entertainment industry in general, but just in life is that there is no 
other person on this planet that has your best interest in mind more than yourself. There is no one else that's looking out for you more than yourself. There is no one's opinion, whether they have more experience or they're a professional or whatever, they're in the business for a while. There is no one no one. I don't care how nice they are to you. I don't care how much they're buttering you up, telling you what you want to hear. There is no one else that knows what is best for you more than yourself. Because so much of my time as a musician, it's so impossible not to feel insecure, especially when I just sort of started doing this as a passion project. And now it's become something legitimate. I feel like I have to rely on other people's advice who know what they're talking about, right? Because they've been in the business for so long to gain insight. But at the end of the day, it's like there are people that are going to give you good advice, but there is no single person out there that is always going to know what's right for you. And I think that lesson has really made me feel like I've been doing it wrong again this whole time. I should just make the songs from the ground up by myself, pay someone to mix them, and then put them out. Literally, as I was writing this video, like just outlining it, I realized I was never wrong. No process I ever had was wrong. It made perfect sense for me to do at those points in my life. It made perfect sense for me to try to learn how to do all the music myself. I didn't know anyone that wanted to collaborate with me. How else was I gonna make songs? I should just do it myself. And COVID happened. It makes sense for me to want to branch out and work with collaborators because I want to get better at this craft and I feel like the best way to learn is through working with other people that have different areas of expertise. And then working in person, it's like even better because it feels like I'm even more a part of the song making process. And I feel like I'm learning more about production through working in person with other people. It all makes sense. There is no right or wrong way. And even if you feel like your process was not as good in the past as it is now, it made perfect sense for you to make music the way you did at that time. When I was first putting out music, even putting out stuff that I knew I didn't like, I knew I wasn't gonna be proud of, I thought, well, you know, if I'm as upfront and honest and like, I put out songs that maybe I don't like, but maybe someone else will like them. If I just do that, then it'll be kind of cool too if you look at my discography because you'll just see my progression and see me get better. Like I wasn't afraid of sucking publicly because I thought it's kind of cool if you're really bad and then people see you get better. Although I do look back and I genuinely do wish I didn't put out some of the songs I did just for the sake of, you know, putting out the songs I really cared about as singles and just keeping them at that. I think it was pointless for me to like put out two EPs. I just thought that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. I'm just making music. I'm just Googling like, what should I do? It's like, there's no right or wrong way. There's no formula to being a successful musician, being a good musician, making music that you're proud of. There is no right or wrong way. And even if the ways that you used to make music feel wrong, they weren't wrong. They were all valid in that time. They all made sense at that time. And you wouldn't have made what you did if you didn't do it the way you did it, whether you like it or not. Something right now, though, that I do feel like I've finally gotten right, that I feel like makes the most sense for me and that makes me make the best music is just thinking less. And I know that sounds so stupid, but... I used to like sit at my computer. I used to be like, oh my God, like when writing the lyrics, just like, oh, I could pick a better word for this. Oh, this is fine. But like, what if this had an internal rhyme in it? And what if I use this big word? There is no point in getting hung up on the first draft of the song. It's the first draft. Just spit it out. Spit out the first thing that comes to mind. And if you don't like it, change it. But whatever that first impulse is, just spit it out. Just write it down. I've never been more proud of my songwriting than I am in my most recent EP because I feel like I just let myself take a deep breath, not think so hard, and just put down how I feel in that moment. There's no point in getting hung up on making the first draft perfect because chances are the less you think and the more you let the song pour out of you, the better the song is going to be, the more authentic it's going to be, and the more meaning it's going to have later on. Even if you don't know what it means right now, 
You'll know. For example, like when I made Nightstand, Jondren and I weren't even going to make a song that day. I was staying with him in LA. I was just visiting. I didn't live here yet. And he was working on this other song that day. He was just over it. He was like, I can't make this song work. I was doing jack all that day because I was just like, didn't really know what to do. We were just like talking and he was just messing around on the guitar, literally playing that melody in that song. He was just playing that while we were just like having a conversation. And I was like, oh, wait, that's kind of cool. And then I like the first thing out of my mouth. And he was like, oh no, that's really cool. Let's record this. The syllables of like the came out of my mouth. And then I just was like, oh, three plates. Okay. Literally, I wrote that song in like one go, like 10 minutes. I was like, okay, lyrics are done. And I think if I would have went back and been like, oh man, like the trees as sweet as cedar wood, like that doesn't make any sense. Oh, bitter is the way you seem. Like, oh, everything I say, like you, I don't, everything you say, I don't believe. Oh, I could pick something more profound. I could pick a better way to really like end this song on a bang. But it's like, shut, get over yourself. It's fine. The less you think about what you're trying to say and you just type everything you're thinking, type it all. And then if, guess what? This isn't limestone. This isn't a pen and quill. You can just delete it if you don't think it's good, but write it down, write it down. Oh, you tear me apart was another one that just like poured out of me in solemn monophonic. Like literally we were writing a different song, a totally different song. We took a break to eat sandwiches. Jared's just like on the, com on the computer. He's on the piano, just like freestyling a melody, that piano melody. off the cuff. I say, wait, that's really cool. Can we scrap that other song and start this new song? I actually have a vocal melody that I think would sound really cool on this. He put the piano down. I put down that, what's it called? Chromatic ascending melody. And then I'm like, oh, you know what would be crazy is if we put this descending chromatic harmony on the second derivative. Of the you just let it happen. You let it pour out of you. If it's not good, then delete it later. When we were writing the chorus of that song, I found myself even getting into that cycle of like, we could pick something better. When Jared was like, oh, why don't for that one part, it's like, there we go. When you break my heart. Why don't we just say that? And I was even like, I feel like we could pick something better. And Jared was like, who cares? Just like, let's just do that. We can't think of anything better. I think that's fine. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Why does it, it doesn't matter. There's, it's a waste of time to get hung up on lyrics. And it's like, yeah, could I pick more profound things to say? Could I make the imagery more visceral sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, I could. But I feel like when I've thought too hard about songs in the past, like autopilot, I think the writing on that song is really good. One whole me, I think the verse, you know, is fine, but I'm like, I thought too. It feels like when I listen to those songs and I go back and I listen to them, I'm like, I thought too hard about what I was saying. And I feel like I can tell. Whereas in these new songs, I'm not worried about using these big profound analogies and imagery and whatever. It's just like, I'm just talking my shit. Just let the words come out of you. Even if you don't know what they mean right now, you'll figure it out. I had no idea what you tear me apart meant when I wrote it but it's some of my favorite lyrics I've written. I love the writing on that song. I especially, I love the verse of that song. No idea what I was talking about at the time. But when I look back on that song, I go, oh wow, no, this makes so much sense why I wrote this song at that time and why the song sounds like it does because it's about this feeling of just, you know, it feels like everything is right. Everything is not too good to be true, but just like fine and it feels like I should be content, but it's like there's this looming sort of feeling of something is wrong. That's what that song's about. And I didn't realize that when I was making the song, I was just letting the words come out of me. But then I look back and I'm like, oh, it makes sense what that song is about and why it sounds that way. Because I feel like the instrumental really, at least to me, encapsulates that feeling of like, this is 
something's off. Something about this song is unsettling. It feels like a happy, like, ooh, like, windows down song, but there's something unsettling about this song. And that's how I was feeling at that time. Everyone's process is different. Everyone's process varies from song to song, from person to person, completely different. People change the process over time too. None of those processes are wrong though. Even the way I used to write lyrics where I would think too hard. I don't look back at that at least now and go, oh, that's wrong. I'm looking back at that right now and going, that made sense at the time. I'm still learning. I'm trying to get better. But now I've been doing it for such a amount of time that I feel like when I think less and I just let the song pour out of me, it's a better song. You know what it's about. You know why you're saying those things, but sometimes it's all subconscious. And I think that's a beautiful thing because things pour out of you that you don't even realize you're feeling. It's really cool. So I hope this is interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions or topics you want me to dive into about like my music career, I would love to talk about it. I think this stuff is fun. And I learned so much through interviewing other artists on this Spotify podcast I used to co-host called Lorem Life. I would interview artists every week and like learn about how they made music and their process and how they got into it. And it inspired me so much. And I genuinely think that that process also helped me grow so much as an artist. I hope if you're an aspiring musician that this inspires you too. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. It would mean a lot if you subscribe to this channel. I upload like two to three times a week. It's fun. Um, I'm going on tour soon in the fall with Jordana. It's going to be really fun. If you want to come see me play a show, it'll be fun. And we can sing together. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, Till next time. Bye, guys.